Okay, booyah. Another Friday, another episode of the Bro Nouveau podcast. Elias, what's up, man? Welcome. Welcome to the show. Uh, thank you for um, actually inviting me as a guest. I mean, I I, would, I never expect a, you know invite in general, but it's always good to receive one. No complaints. Yeah, here. yeah, for sure. It's a good feeling. Yeah, I reached out to you because you're accessible in that way, right? Because you also have a podcast. But, you know, you like to talk about policy, our government, you know, you have an interest in history and a lot of other different topics. So by way of introduction, how would you introduce yourself to our audience? Well, this is how I'll introduce myself to audience as simple as possible because know me, I'm a complicated person in real life. Uh, <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so I... So I host a podcast called Politically High Tech. Um, some of you may even see the old name Peer, Politically Entertained with Evolving Randomness. Way too long. Some people say it was way too long. It was hard to find. So I just changed it to say Politically High Tech. It covers just enough. It keeps the random stuff, even the mystery. So you want to know what you're going to get in the third segment. So Thomas is an extra from the first or second segment. It's it's just that that random. So I host that Politically um, High Tech um, that's show I focus on politics, history, technology. It used to be just strictly video games and board games, but I expanded to, to technology. To me, that's way more interesting than just focus on those two. And to me, not, not a lot of interesting stuff is happening in those realms anyway. And then the third one would be something very random. We're topic finale. It could be something about God. It could be about your very, very weird stuff that one would not count. Like, for example, Australia, they had a, an appointed wizard, which was a political position, and then he got canceled for saying such remarks that will be considered anti-women, especially when you go off the rant. So, A wizard? Was this related to indigenous Australian yeah. culture or... Or no. no, just women in general. You just say how how they are how they are so difficult, how they always whine and complain about everything, right? Um, <laughs> I'm not I'm the voyage I use to be where in my right, show, right. by the way, it is a bit um uncensored um language, but Yeah. You know. So is this. Feel comfortable. Oh, okay. But the but the wizard position, what was that about? That the sad part is I never really looked that deep into it. It's just so weird, <laughs> interesting that it was just like what the yeah. fuck they really have this position. It was like a point <laughs> for the Australian government, and but now that I think they're just axing that position and yeah. just abolishing it. They're not going to replace anyone. The last time um I I didn't even know it was a real thing in Australia. So it it, it could be weird stories um like that and about how a five year old was labeled a rapist. Five year old boy, so real interesting. I mean, really, really weird stuff. And sometimes very spiritual, philosophical, psych psychology. You know, sometimes I get tired of talking about politics and technology, so I just branch off and dabble. That's my more dabbler, dabbler, random section. So I thought I'm talking about that way more, but I think our focus is more government and political. And that's always been my very first segment. I always talk about government politics, and even though lately I've been shifting center right on some issues, but I always still maintain the ground that well, listen, I'm independent. I'm loyal to neither the Democrats or Republicans because they are both equally corrupt in my mind, equally corrupt, equally flawed, and I could go on for hours on how they're that for both sides of the of the aisle. Even though I agree with Dems in some things, like uh, immigration, I tend to actually agree with Dems a little more. They're human beings. You know, this country was built on immigrants. And then where I lean towards the right will be Christian, Christian rights. I will lean right on that issue. So, because Christian rights, I will actually side with the right more. Mm -hmm. But it depends on the position. I, I'm a, I'm like a mixed a, bag of politics. Like That's the, why the I have Christian, a couple couple. The Christian baker's right to not Bake a gay cake, for example. Yeah, no, I would. I would defend that. I would just say, well, there are alternatives. There are those that are secular that are willing to to do the service. Right. You know, so and, then, and just to add on a little bit, and you know, if the Christian lose their money, so be it. 
that's on them to you know choose not to <laughs> not to do not to do that. So you know you gotta look. Yeah, I try to look at things both sides of the aisle. Sometimes most of the time I'll, I'll say I'll do a good job. I'm sorry, you, you was gonna say something. No worries. Yeah, that, thank you for the intro. So, what is your best example you can provide of corruption from both sides, Democratic and Republican? And I guess more specifically, let's go at a, like a federal level because individual state and city corruption is rife. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, let's start with uh let me see flip 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 okay let's start with uh with some republicans <laughs> and democrats actually i can lump the bomb to this one corruption okay. stock inside trading both parties are guilty of this equally i mean the prop the republicans they say they're very proud of it there's, there's nothing wrong with this so how you bother trying to make extra money and then the democrats <laughs> is oh we're gonna ban it then they go behind closed doors and do the opposite All right so that's their approach of defend, defending and then or or they like Nancy Post should give an excuse. Oh, unfortunately I was not able to get enough Republican votes. You got the bare majority to get this bill passed, unless right. there was so much infighting within the Democrats that you, you can't get it um done. I mean that's one of the few things I would have to agree with um AOC, call them out on that um that inside trade thing. To me that's very um Corrupt. I and know me. I disagree with her with so many things, but that's one of the issues. I say, you know what? I agree with you. I, I, I'm. I don't. I try not to drink the Kool Aid. I will even agree with the enemy occasionally. So right. that'd be one example of that. I, I don't think I should use enemy. I should just say my political opponent. There you go. Just put it nicely. Enemy's yeah. been too harsh. Yeah. Well, kind of having that open mind is how we avoid the enemy idea, and. I think all of it's tied up with extreme polarization and what we're going to talk about today is really tied up in understanding our democracy better. And a lot of observers have been raising the alarm that there's been some anti-democratic tendencies like capital D with, let's say, you know, starting with former President Trump's refusal to promised to accept a loss and his, you know, <clears throat> worst case planning and, and inciting of the in, attempted insurrection or best case tolerating it or kind of being like, if you guys want to do it, you know, I won't stop you. And that that's a problem. And, and all of it kind of comes back to the idea around why is our d democracy worth defending for those people in our country, who never thought about it? What makes this system unique, and why should we try to protect it? All right, I got a lot to say about that. I mean, I'm just gonna start with my personal opinion. I'm then I'm gonna get into the facts and weeds of this issue because this is very dangerous. I mean, let's just be clear: this is extremely dangerous, and I won't be surprised. This trend is gonna continue. I won't be surprised. You know, we, we might see maybe some from the Democrats, who knows, or maybe some for the Republicans with this midterm on um, election results. And this, I mean, the, the Democrats have opposed on Donald Trump's of victory 2016. They were very vocal about it, but Biden, he did his job to deny, deny, deny. All these were, were just rubbish claims, okay? I mean, that's responsible government. That's our responsible transfer of power. However, with this insanity that happened in the Capitol, I mean, it's still debate to some degree that, oh, Trump caused it, Trump didn't. I don't believe Trump caused it, but I will say he was very irresponsible for tolerating it. That's where I lean at. I say he, I won't say he um, caused the whole thing, but he was very irresponsible for stopping it um, proactively. It got really out of hand. Sadly, a couple of people died. And it doesn't even matter if these people are his supporters or not. The fact that you're the president... You let it slide this much, and he waits to the very end saying, okay, I love you guys. You can go home. I say, come on. you. you this is <laughs> – so are you serious? Uh, you know what they're going to do. Um, yeah. You know I they're going to go march, right, down to the Honestly, Capitol. 
you know, so they may, you know, it doesn't matter if they're part of the, the MAGA or the BLM or all these other groups. The fact is that they came in, breached, did damage, breached to the building. They, I mean, some of them even came in there casually. I mean, there were security failures. Now, for me to bash the Democrats, um, well, Nancy Pelosi was House at, yeah, she was House Speaker at that time. Yeah, because she got that position back in 2018. So she was still house. I mean, she should have done a better job being more alert of the security details. So to me, this is more federal corruption, incompetence for both sides of the aisle. A lot of people like to, you know, sadly, when you're president, you get blamed a lot more. That's just, that's just reality. It, so, you know, it, it is either indirectly his fault and sadly, we just keep using hey until we get a female president. I don't know when that's going to happen. Um, I mean, not anytime soon, um, though, which that's kind of disheartening. I don't mind female leadership, really. I'm not afraid of it. Yeah, so, it, disheartening is a good word, I guess. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's just, it's just, yeah, so there, there's definitely blame, legitimate blame for both sides of the aisle. It should have never gotten to this level of dysfunction. It should have never, never, never got to, to this level. So, Blaming Trump is only one part. Now, I'm not going to give him a free pass. That's not, even, you know, it's sad that he got impeached for that. But he got Scott free. That sadly, that was the second impeachment in his first one so far only term. Two impeachments. That's unprecedented <laughs> that's in a, a bad record. way. Yeah, yeah, that's so I want to be proud of that record. If I was him, but you know, I can't read a guy. I'm not him, so yeah. I mean, it it it's just something that you know something could have been um done about it. Definitely more security prep because they were pretty prepared when the BLM were protesting and all that. And, right. I, and I always agree that they have the right to protest, but they don't have the right to do it. This is not just for the left. Or the, this is just for any party. They don't have the right to burn loot cause havoc can they shout and be annoying yes but that's part of protest <laughs> are they gonna block some roads yes that's part of protest all right i mean i don't like it too sometimes especially y'all just want to go and hang out i mean i can even list a couple examples of atlantic city say you know they do a bunch of i don't know, banging stuff and just shouting short fr phrases just uh at just uh support their cause so you know i get annoyed with some of them but you know they have the right to do to do it you know and <laughs> law shouldn't be caring about feelings that much do i get annoyed sometimes hell yeah i do but they got the uh, right it's part of first amendment yeah so 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 you would disagree then with rioting is the language of the downtrodden or the, or the unheard sadly yes because these people don't get to be heard i mean that's uh i think a martin luther king quote i'm um, mistaken yeah that's definitely that and, i think so i, I don't yeah. know either actually no actually it is it was quoted a couple of times it is the language of the unheard and it's spot on to disagree with it is um lunacy because people have you know people have opportunities to speak and whenever they get heard sometimes um, but when it comes to, um, oh, by the way, you might deal, you might deal with my unofficial co-host streets of New York. It's that loud, so, that loud time sometimes. So <laughs> it comes in uninvited, <laughs> but, but what was I? So, so that, that kind of is a counter idea to the one you just said, right? Cause mm -hmm. you know, they don't have the right to do violence and property right. damage, but at the same time, but, it's almost understandable why. So that's right. like a core, a core conflict, you know, probably a lot of people right. feel that way. No, right. And, you know, it is complicated and I wish I always had a clean, simple answer for this, but I just think it needs to be invited to the tables and we need to reach out to those people that are being unheard. That would probably be one remedy. And so you get those who say, no, I don't want to participate. Find a way to convince them without being so forceful or insistent. Mm. I was like, you, you gotta participate out. That would be one way. And 
Yeah, sadly, the writing is the language of the unheard. The most frustrated and most frustrated, I should add in there too. And say, you know what? Fuck it. You know, kaboom. And that's it. I, I, I disagree with that, but sadly, I understand why. Just because I agree yeah. with it, just because I disagree with it doesn't mean I don't understand. I understand why. And and I blame particularly in politicians, corporations, even the media for making these people um frustrate, but that'll be a whole nother can of worms. Mm. I don't need to open with each with each of those yeah. entities. Okay. Um, so personally this is why I became independent because both parties don't represent me very well. Mm. They don't. Right. So so back to the kind of defense of democracy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what about our system, how we came to exist, is unique and worth protecting? You know, having these conversations, trying to kind of let people know that our systems are under under fire. Oh, no, they're under fire for multiple reasons. And I would, I mean... The problem with so many people, I want to start with the voting pattern that shows over and over again. Less than half the country participates only for the presidential election. Okay, that's number one. And if you want to check the lower positions in, in the in, in these um, political races, that will just go down from there. Senate, at best, you probably get a third of a state. Third of eligible voters mind you because not you know children are not allowed to vote and those who got incarcerated even that varies from state to state that's a whole ooh, that's a super beast that's right there fucked to get into. up also so i mean my position yeah my i have a i won't say interesting position on that it will cause it might cause some uproar among, among some listeners um you know, some some states for it comes to incarcerated, even when they're free, they're not allowed to vote. Oh yeah. My, well, now my position is, if they serve their time, they should get their right back. Yeah. To me, I that'll think... be the that'll be the rational position. Okay. He's, Absolutely. You know, he or she served their time. Well, most easy he, because sadly, men commit more crime than women. Even though women commit crimes going up. Um. Yeah, no, and some states just say, oh, you commit the crime, you, you know, you're a criminal for life, even if they're out of, you know, out of prison, and they can't vote. I, I think um, they need to be more um, lenient on, on that and probably give, I don't know, six months to a year grace period. I mean, we could discuss the details on that um, when, when they're out, because sadly, some of them do become repeated offenders for for millions of different reasons. But, um, yeah, let me get back to the whole, the voter participation, which is, I'll say, a very big problem. I'll say the number one problem. Barely less than half participate for president, Senate, House representative, the House representatives, even lower participation. You get probably like a single percent of each district, maybe single to double digit, and maybe about double digit probably is like 20% on average participating and this is among eligible voters so low yeah that is low and that's a big problem because i'll be just say okay we're gonna vote for biden yeah everything's gonna change <laughs> no i'm okay I'm, let me try to be nice <laughs> no you fool you need to per, you, know, you need to work hard at all meaningful changes takes hard work Voting for president is far from enough. Far from enough. So easy. Oh, yeah. Biden's going to do this. Biden's going to do that. If you have, <laughs> this is definitely to checks and balances. If you have a Republican Senate and House, that's enough to block so many things he wants to do. Everything. Oh. Uh, um, Except executive orders. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. Uh, hey, you summed up very well. Executive orders, and even that, oh, and that's going to be challenged by the federal court. That's going to be challenged by local court, federal court, and it's going to go up to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court right. is against them right now because it's – Yeah, that's true. I split it into Any... three camps. Three very hard conservatives, three moderate right-wingers, and 
the, the other three is just liberals. So those are your three subgroups I've divided into. The, the hardcore right, moderate right, and the liberals. So he's going to be even be challenged even with some of those executive orders. So voting for the president is not enough. And they wonder why some things can change. And another thing a lot of people forget is that you have to participate in state elections, county elections, and local elections because those laws will have a greater, more direct impact on your life than even the federal. I mean, you for know, sure. you, you, because you it's, know, it, it's the leaders who create policy for the immediate environment in which you live. You know, like, what do they get? They get funding from the feds who we vote for. But that's even on a Senate level that most people may not even vote for. Or a congressional level. And, yeah, it's like city council, right? Depending on which city. but like, So I've lived in Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., and San Francisco. D.C. actually, I wasn't. I was in college, so I wasn't that engaged. But in Philadelphia and in San Francisco, the city council is are the kings and queens. You know, they they dictate almost everything. The school board has a lot of power. You know, those are positions that are very important that often go un you know unnoticed. Yeah, and those is an ex- excellent word. And the participation rates of those, whew, it is so bad. I mean, it's so, so bad that it's just, I mean, I really, I laughed as if I was just um, inhaling laughing gas. That's how loud I laughed. I said, wow, you know, people wonder why <laughs> things don't change. <laughs> Shit doesn't change. You have to participate on so many levels. Not just president. President can fix it all. President's not the king or the queen. Okay? Uh, and I'm talking particularly BC times, medieval times, where they say is law is law. That's it. You know? And, you know, we live in, uh, you know, some people, some people even debate that this country is not even a democracy. You know, some people, you know, especially on the right, they say this is a constitutional republic. Mm. So even the fact that, you know, more left-leaning people or center people or even independents will say it's democracy, but for some reason the right will say, no, this is a constitutional republic. And, you know, I could, I could get into that, but I'll be, I'll be, drift, I'll be drifting um, off. So there's even disagreement among that about what kind of system that we in. I mean, this is the this is the, sadly the symptom of polarization. I mean, mm. being polarized is just about um everything, which is no good. Yeah, seriously, e- even that. I mean, it's it's gotten to that um level. So you know, people just go out there and vote. Do do your research first before you vote. See if you find a candidate that matches with most of your priorities, beliefs, positions you have. For example, if you want more welfare state, there ain't no D. Anything with a D in there is going to help you with that. <laughs> to a lesson, you know, want, I mean, some more than others. Far left, oh, yeah, they want government, they want super government expansion, while moderates is like, eh, let's just do one step at a time, very slowly. That's a big differentiation between the moderate and the progressives right there. Uh, you know, but if you want more tough laws, quality of life, well, that, I hate to say it, normally leans on the R or even some moderate D. But that's when you have to do your research, just just, just differentiate. Um, what's what? You want more gun laws? That's definitely R. But, you know, so just go issue by issue or just go by whatever is the most important issue to you some people some voters are single voters just care about marijuana well now we go to that one normally that's a d or a center right person because some like libertarians particularly they those are the republicans up to get high with the left (laughs) so so, you know it sadly is not always um clean cut and dry um so that's all to say about that funny about libertarians it's hilarious 
Yeah, so on, yeah, on that know. issue, they yeah they're very they're very um pro weed, and I'm pro weed. I, I'm definitely I'm definitely um pro weed. Oh yeah. And, I, I mean, it's listen, not as it's bad better to be this. regulated. Oh, I'm sorry, I was gonna say. I think I just think the best example of why it should be legal is that if you're not gonna illegalize alcohol, then you shouldn't you shouldn't ban cannabis at that point. You know, they're they're part and parcel similar similarly problematic, yeah. No, yeah, you know, no, I agree. And it should be people's choice to do that and be regulated by the the government does provide some safety, you know, and I had a debate with my um I had a you know, this is a nice, respectful debate by my mother on that. I said, Will you rather have the weed go back to the streets? You know what they've done with some of them. They mix up with drugs and make people go crazy, whatever. I'd rather be regulated by businesses. I said, I know you were ideally weed shouldn't even exist. But you know, it's here, and I prefer to be regulated by government. And I would say the same thing with prostitution. Yeah, with sex work. Once, so, I mean, yeah. Nevada, I obviously already did that. One of my favorite states, by the way. Um, I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I'm just giving a shout out. Yeah, especially Vegas. Tell, tell us time. more about your, about your trips to Vegas, Elias. Yep. No, 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 no. If I don't care about my podcast career, then I will. That'll be part one of the finales. You know, going out with a bang. Oh, Elias did this. Elias did that. You know, and you know, I. But yeah, no, no. But the food, amazing. Can easily compete with New York City. Easy. I mean, some of the even surpassing New York City. So, which I'm beginning to disown that city, which I'm born and from. You know, I'm I'm, I'm going to be a trader pretty soon, probably a couple of years. The way this is which, going. Which uh, which borough are you in? Oh, borough that will be okay. You, oh, you know the the borough system. Some of them, some are just think Manhattan and Brooklyn. That's it. If Brooklyn, I'll just say okay. You know your stuff. But to answer that question, so just trying to delay it. You know, oh, will be the the Bronx. Bronx, the most Latino-oriented borough in New York City. Did you grow I mean, up in a in that environment, like a Latino neighborhood? You see, when I grew up, and where I'm currently at is different because it was a population shift. I grew up with a decent amount of white folk, black folk, even some mostly Puerto Rican folk. I only use the word Latino broadly because, mm -hmm, I mean, sure. starting when I was in middle school, I started seeing good amount of Dominicans come in, and my mind was like, what the fuck do these people come from? You know, <laughs> I, it's, it's like a xenophobe for a second, but I was like, oh, okay, and then I got to understand them. And then, you know, and then I just got used to it because this is, you know, this this, this was a population shift that I was going through, that I was experiencing, and then I read, and I read the Dominican um, immigration, they had an explosion in the 90s. So this is definitely when I was growing up. So that's why I started saying, oh, okay, I want to start seeing more of them come in, come in, come in, like pretty much exponentially. I mean, it was to the point that they were just replacing the white, Puerto Rican, and even some black. They started getting majority in some of the, the neighbors, or at least I felt that way. I got to read the statistics just to break that down. Because just because I feel it, it doesn't mean it's a fact. And people mm -hmm. got to um, understand that. People do need to understand that. <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm serious about that. Is Same. That... That's a great line. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, my my comedy was actually very unintentional, but you know that that's how it's, I that, express it. It's so true. I feel like that's a big tied up with the polarization thing. You know, just because you feel it doesn't mean it's a fact. Unfortunately. Yeah, man. You know, just like the right attack, the left with the feelings, they got their feelings um, too. I mean, oh some, some have went and shoot a couple of people. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. You, you criticize the left with the feelings thing, but you act on your feelings too, bro. I mean, and, and then the left being open-minded, but yet you exclude Christians and all of that. So much of me, though. <laughs> you see, I call out both sides of the aisle. That's why yeah, I say, you know a... what? Fuck it, I'm independent. That's the best decision I ever made. Never changing that. <laughs> Never, I, yeah, I'm just gonna be a, 
mostly a lifelong independent because I've been that way since I, yes, it's 2014. I've been registered. I'm um, independent. So, no, nah, actually, no, I'll be lying. I'll probably say 2017. But I felt like an independent 2014. That was more right, right. Yeah, so, see, even, yeah. Yeah, oh, see, I caught that myself what, right there. See, feeling. When, when the and Dominicans then, took over. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, no, no, no. They, no, no, they've been, they've been, to, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're, want, they're wonderful people. You know, but yeah, for first sure. for me, it was a shock because I was experiencing it as a kid. And, you know, when you're a kid, you're shameless with your reaction. You know, you can sign like a, a bigot, a homophobe, whatever, because you're just shameless. Like, well, yeah, yeah, just yeah. Filter. No, no, no filter, exactly. <laughs> so it's like, what the, what the fuck are these people doing here? But, That's you know, funny. <laughs> I, got used to, no, I, got, yeah, I got used to it because, man, and I mean, a lot of the white were gone. It was finding white people was as rare as finding jewelry. And... <laughs> <laughs> and the black was stacking it. It kind of like stood the same. Okay, some died, some moved in. It was just enough just to maintain their, you know, their their portion of representation. And then the PR, a lot of them left after nine eleven. And nine eleven is when a lot of them's like, "Man, boy, uh, out." You know, boy. they. What was the connection there? What, why? Oh, man, boy, like I'm, I'm leaving. I'm gone. Oh, so no, sorry. Um... No. At, with nine eleven and them leaving, what? I mean, I could theorize a couple of things. When they saw that happen, they can't get that. You know, it's so vivid and visceral even after the event happening. And this is just, of course, my personal testimony. A lot of that I knew moved to different states. They moved to Delaware, some to Florida, a very popular one for Puerto Ricans, by the way, to move to. And when New York is no longer good to them, <laughs> and some of them are shifting <laughs> to the right, by the way, that's been a yeah. trend that's been catching on. That, that's been recorded multiple times already. I mean, damn, stop with this woke language. I'm very anti-woke. I think the woke is, I think, me personally, I think it's the 21st century of communism. That's probably radical, but that's a, but that's what I think of, of, of wokeness. Can we be respectful to one another? And yes, without this stupid terminology, this is why Latinos are leaving the Democrat party in droves. I mean, it may sound superficial, may sound flaky and all that, but it's true. And they, and they seen the crime went up and, you know, sadly, you know, and I knew this was going to happen because Latinos in general, generally speaking, are very, very conservative in their life and what they believe in God. They, I said, they, they was going to eventually shift to the right. Christian yeah. population generally. I mean, yeah, it's a huge group of people, but you know, the particularly at least the closest neighbor would be Mexico, you know, a, a Catholic nation. So. Yeah. So when they, when they were seeing all this wokeness and especially some of the teaching of critical race, they even turned some of them off too. I mean, I, I, I could go further into that, but I think, I think I'm just going to stop and censor myself back to the checks and balances of government. No, um, that's all right, man. Because, I mean, it's what, it's what's going on. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I could think go it's on. a little more exciting than checks and balances, <clears throat> you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, but I still think they need, I mean, I, I think I already provide a lot of unintended comedy. So I'm just going to briefly go through what the checks and balances are. I've already touched some of them regarding with Congress. And one I mentioned before that a lot of people don't know, me, I didn't find out until five years ago, and this is me who studied these things, that Congress, meaning the Senate, and not, well, yeah, the Senate, no, the House starts the impeachment, and then the Senate does the trial. Those are their two roles. They could impeach the president, the executive branch, or one of the Supreme Court justices for whatever in whatever grounds that they have. And sometimes it doesn't have to be legitimate. It can be for political reasons. Let's use Brett Kavanaugh, because Brett Kavanaugh generated a lot of controversy. They impeached <laughs> yeah, him because, eh, well, Lord forgive me for this. He beat up his wife and killed his children. Actually, yeah. That you know, that, actually, no. That's that's a really bad one. That's too drastic. Okay, he's been accused of raping his wife. Let's just stick to that. And mostly Democrats, they're gonna they're gonna um draft their articles of impeachment. 
They're going to gather the votes, and then once they get enough votes and simple majority is enough, which they barely got, they cannot face too much um, this internal disagreement. Then it goes to the Senate. The Senate holds the trial. Yeah, the, they, the Senate holds to the trial, and then the House representatives, they're more like the witnesses or prosecutors even. And then they gave their fact, their facts, sometimes it's facts and quotes, because they're, they're sometimes it's political. And then they go through the and sometimes it takes years for it to be done. I mean, no one has been officially, I mean, you could get impeached and still be in office. I mean, it takes a really, really long time. I mean, Bill Clinton's been impeached. Been, you know, he, he went through impeachment. He, 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 he wasn't kicked out. I mean, the only one I resigned was Richard Nixon because he, if he would have stood, he would have been the first fully impeachable, boop, kicked out a president ever. He was the first one to actually received the boot, but he resigned. That's probably the only smart thing he did. Just like um, every cop accused of misconduct, by the way. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that gets me hot under the collar. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, now my policing um, opinion, I would, if I have to write, if I have to put it in a scale, I would say it's center right. I'm generally on the cop side until they do something really f fucked up. Like what mm -hmm. happened with George Floyd, I sided with George Floyd, the family, even with BLM, even though I disagree with them a lot. I'm, I don't consider myself a BLM. Mm -hmm. What the cop did was so psychotic, so wrong, that I just said, you know, anyone who defend this guy, you must be desperate for red pill bucks or something, or approvals, because, and I knew people on Facebook, I was defending Derek Shaw, oh, he killed, oh, he killed his foul criminal, he, they say, oh, a bunch of, you know, a bunch of crazy stuff, and I debated real hard on this issue, I said, look, I looked at the evidence, I'm not saying George Floyd's the same. I'm never saying that. He had a dirty he had a dirty past, but so did Derek Chauvin. He's a cop. George Floyd wasn't. Okay. And and some right wingers actually grew brain cells and you know and went against Derek Chauvin. Thank God for some of them. But some of them just went in this red pill that oh he had to do self defense and all that. He had to do this. I said no. Well, you could have just strained him down, just leave him on the ground and pick him up and then put him in prison and then do them experience the real due process, just like every other criminal goes to, right? I mean, this mafia that's killed hundreds, even thousands of people, they got they went through the process just fine. Why can't he? I mean, vicious murderers. You yeah. know, and yeah. so yeah, my yeah, my yeah, I was really I'm happy that Derek Chauvin just got locked up. I just think he should stay there in prison for life. That's my position. I maintain that position to this day. He just got like, what, 20 some years? Not good enough. Life. He took a life away. Yeah, completely unnecessarily. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, I have very specific gripes with policing practices. Um, I have a lot of respect for the profession. I think it's a largely thankless job. And, you know, I keep in the back of my head if I was home and something bad happened, I'd call the police. You know, I'm not going to be like, call them and be, my house is being robbed. Fuck you, defund you, and hang up. You know, I'm going to be like, come help me. Um, so my, my but, the, but the thing is, for me, is that there are very clear, established, predatory patterns in policing. The war on drugs, particularly, was a vehicle to kind of create a permanent, self-fulfilling cycle of crime in poor neighborhoods. Unequal distribution of enforcement and... You know, all races use drugs in similar proportions, but it's in this country black and brown people who are targeted, and that's intentional. You know, and police will say, that, oh, it's easier because, you know, white people do it in their house and in the street it's open air. It's like, all right, then stop being lazy. Like, 
it's not your job to pick and choose which populations, you know, it's like telling me that like, it's easier to do it in this group or this area is better for me is not a satisfactory answer. Like that's not. And then the other thing that gets me really hot in the collar is just the, well, there's so much about it, dude, but the protection and kind of folding in that happens when someone does something wrong. Like, it took a whole groundswell of the entire country in 2020 getting pissed off for Derek Chauvin to go to jail. But there are countless examples of wrongdoing that just goes to an internal investigation. We found no wrongdoing. And the person either gets shuffled along like a diddling priest or they retire and get a pension the rest of their lives. And even down to the way police interact with individuals is really manipulative. You know, it's like, Hey, like you mind if I search the car, you know, you have the right to say, yeah, I do actually like articulate your reasonable suspicion. Am I being detained? No. Okay. Then I'm getting, I'm getting out of here. Like have a good day. But no one knows they can do that because we're conditioned to have a certain response to them. So I don't know. I think it, it's something that really is a super complicated one. You know, for me, because at the same time, I do have that respect for the people who do it and do it well. Yeah. I think that's the distinction, right? Like, I support good cops who actually do the job, right? But there's a lot of corrupted ones. That's a very good example that you live about how they target it more. Um, I'm going to say melanin rich people because I hate, sure. I hate, I hate that. People from yeah. color terminology, I, you know, yeah. I can't see woke because I, you know, yeah, yeah. melanin rich people, <laughs> that's what I'm going to call it. No, they do get targeted a lot. It's a fact. It's been proven time and time again. I mean, it's oh, undis yeah. undisputable. And this is why I never drink the red pill away on that one and just say, oh, cops can never do anything wrong. Yeah, that's complete bullshit. I've seen great examples of that um, as well. But when it comes to that drug thing, I actually have to totally um, agree that they target those people because they don't do it in their private property. And that's you know, what I notice. And I have, I have um taken some of that stuff, but I was sadly strategic on doing it on a white suburban neighborhood. Right, so I won't right. have to go through that, but somewhere <laughs> in the city and look, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm a mixed race person. So I'm not the whitest person in the world, obviously. But I was strategic enough to say, oh, okay, we're doing this prior power. Okay, he's cool with smoking the joint. Smoke the joint. Hey, police ain't going to come here. It's private property. Right. And that's sadly, and that's the barrier that they, that the cop excuse that they use just to target city um city folk, melanin and rich people. So, you know, it's very, very unfortunate. They, they should be, you know, if you have to apply the law as equally as possible you know just because someone owns a house you know doesn't give them a they should get a free pass if the drugs are illegal and that's why you hear about these and that's where a lot of these crazy parties are at and some of them die of drug overdose yeah and then cop has to wait for, for, for them to die you know crash these frat parties when some of these steps could be prevented but you know i totally yeah. uh yeah i totally agree with that that's why you got to vote, people. Vote, vote, yeah. vote. Stop being apathetic. You may think it's cool, but you're really fooling and hurting yourself. All right? And, I've, you know, I feel like I am in my own show because I have said this multiple, multiple times. Uh, checks and balances real quick. This is, this is why you need to vote for all levels. And this is just the federal level, mind you. This is not... The state and the local one, that's going to take forever. I just, you know, the federal one, you got what? The legislative branch, that's Senate and the House of Representatives. Okay, they're the ones that create laws. They don't want to appropriate the funds. Okay, got it. House, their term, two years. Every two years, you got to get voted. If you like that person, make sure, you know, when election comes, you keep that person um in their seat. If you start getting apathetic, it's like, ah, it don't matter. You'll be surprised that person got replaced. And sadly, I'm going to call myself out for one of the elections I didn't get to pay attention to because I got too busy with work. That's a that's a different issue. Um, you know, people get 
absorbing their own lives. When I got to work, I have I had a center left person who did a good job, Elliot Engel. I think he did a great job. He's not a worker Republicans. So you gotta learn to be bipartisan, you far left Democrats, you far right morons. Jesus Christ, I can just go on here. You gotta learn how to work. Stop being fucking little children and, le- and learn and learn how to deal with people yeah. that have differences. We're not, no. we're not paying you to fucking piss in the sandbox, like. <laughs> no, yeah, no, ser- no seriously, hey, let's throw some rant in there. But you just and you gotta make sure that they have the ma- you know the, the uh, majority. That's how it simply works. And once once that party gets a majority, they get to put. They get the speaker, not the minority. So why Kevin McCarthy is so bitter right now because he's part of the minority <laughs> party right there. He, I, I got a lot to say about him. He's such a punk ass, that one. He's such a punk. He uses Trump when it's convenient. And, and, and you know, Trump goes along with it. He's going to throw underneath the bus when the time comes. Believe me, he will. Trump is that vindictive <laughs> for sure. It's, it's a yeah. matter of when, not an if kind of question. Uh, oh, no, yeah. he's not going to do that. Oh, yes, he will. He's not MAGA enough. Believe me. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. You watch. They're going to get someone who's MAGA. And, you know, a lot of people say MAGA is the best way to go. I said, hell no, you are no better than the BLM I criticize. And I got my issues with y'all, but y'all the crazy ones. I'm. You know, I got to get my gun ready. I'm about to break a few laws if I have to, because New York gun laws are so damn strict, even though the, the Supreme Court intervened. And now, you know, long story short, you only can have a gun in this place, but not in that place. So what am I going to do? Just throw the gun now? Just buy another? No, 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 no. That, that's ridiculous. Gun-free zone. What, are we in school? Like the drug-free zone? Criminals are not going to obey. I'm going to bust a cap of someone's ass right there. Oh, someone got shot in Times Square. Oh, but it was a gun-free zone. But criminals don't care, you dumbasses, especially on the Democrats on that one. But they know. They're just supporting uh, their radical base. You know, I call them dumbasses to make myself feel good, but that's not going to change anything. So this is why you need to vote, people. This is why craziness is going through the roof. Because especially the school board, start voting your school board if you... If you love critical race theory, if you love all that stuff, you leave the school board alone. But if you hate, but you hate the way it's going, you vote them out. No, I try to, I try to, you know, yeah. get both sides of the aisle. You know, it's true. Me, me, I, I, I would be going against the the school. Board. I want my, I would want you know kids to get a very good um education. So far, I'm looking out for my my youngest nephews, make sure he's not um drinking the Kool Aid. Should we learn about American slavery? Of course. It's part of history. Of course. I'm not against that. That's part of history. I want the good, the bad, and the ugly in American history. And interesting. If I'm going to add something in, into that phrase. You know, just like that Clint um, Eastwood movie. Um, maybe even though I'm a millennial, I'm, I'm too young to watch that. Yeah, right. I watch whatever the hell I want. Great movie, by the way. You know, shout out Clint Eastwood right there. Yeah, um, legend. Yeah, is no, he a good but, guy? Hmm? Like, how's it, how's his reputation? Is he like a decent dude? Uh, you know what? The sad part is, I don't. When it comes to celebrities and all of that, I stop following that stuff. I've been so you busy okay? with so so many things. I'm, I'm he dealt with a couple of controversies, but it died down. About how. You know how you know how manly he is. You know, being a man is is good enough to just uh, stir up some controversy. He's very manly to the most degree. So he looks a little that's... frail to me. Well, I mean, I'm talking <laughs> about his personality. Yeah, physically, yeah, that's another story. <laughs> that's another story. He's so, I mean, he's so all of that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, well, let's see. He just he just gets my my respect. That that that's yeah. where I'm at, and I'm just gonna wrap wrap it right there. <laughs> and, me, and <laughs> you know, and um, what I was going to say that, yeah, so let me get back to the balance thing and try to make it interesting because it's true. A lot of people don't like to listen to this stuff, but they need to listen to this. Supreme Court, 
Who gets to pick the Supreme Court um, nominee? Pre- the president. The president. Yes, the president. And they're going to pick the one that aligns with the ideology. And it's up to only the Senate. Now, the House Representative, the House Representative, get out. You, you, you know, you're not that important here. Only the Senate gets to confirm them. That's how it generally works when it comes to that. And that's how the Supreme Court changes. Um, they could be, they could be voted in, and they could be impeached out. But a lot of, but that's extremely rare, and I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. But it is possible. So, for example, if Brett Kavanaugh gets caught doing the wrong thing, and then that pushes enough Democrats just to impeach him, you're going to see a very rare example of a Supreme Court justice being impeached, but it can be impeached the same way, just like the president. But presidents are more likely to be impeached because they're more controversial and they got more enemies in the Congress in general. So that's that's where it's at. The Supreme Court, they just study the law, they go through the cases and they apply for whatever, you know, it's in the Constitution sometimes. Yeah, in sometimes, theory. Yeah. In theory, exactly. But that you know, that has not always been put into practice. I'm, you know, and I'm going to sound like a, you know, it's, it's probably, you know, there's some things that I think the Constitution does not point out very clearly, but it's up to them to figure that out. Like the right wingers would say Roe v. Wade, you know, was very unconstitutional. Left wingers in general are saying, oh, no, the woman has the right to do what she wants for her body. So those are your... Also, the main those are two main positions there. So that's that's one example where that's debatable, and you know that's their job, and they're there until they're until they retire or they die. So they're gonna be there for a while. That's why it takes a long time, you know, for for you know for changes to take effect in the Supreme Court. You know, they're. Nine seasons. They always start with nine. I think they start with seven. I have to double check. It was it was definitely smaller back then, but they they gradually expanded. I mean, we're only about two hundred forty six years old. And why do I know that? Because one right winger told me that very clearly. We did the math. I said, "Thank God, just take that from you. It sounds smart with my mathematics." I mean, I got to do the math and take my time just to make sure I get it right. But. You know, so that's so that's some of the interaction with that, and then, and then the more popular one with Congress and the president is the one that more people are familiar with. Can the president do a veto against the 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 bill? Yeah, he can. Can that veto be override? Yes, but with two thirds majority of both houses. So over three hundred and probably. No, not three, probably like 325 people in the House needs to override that, and definitely 66 from the Senate. Very hard to achieve with these polarizing times. You could barely achieve a 51 to 55. You'll be lucky to get 60 with these polarizing times. So that's how that veto could be killed. You know, and then, of course, the president, they could just... um. They could just campaign for the bill and then push the Senate and the House to do it. It's more, it's more of an influence thing. You know, you want free colleges for all. Let's use the Bernie Sanders one. Uh, well, that's not going to happen anytime soon because there's not enough people like Bernie Sanders. So you got what, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, probably got someone like El Omar, but that's not enough. That's a good portion of the Democrat Party is still pretty moderate on some positions and they just going to ruin that's too far left for them. And they don't want to be seen like they're um, socialists. So that perception scares them um, for it scares them so much that that bill is not going to be on um, pass. I mean, some of them certain of them has embraced it, but that's not the majority. I mean, John Fetterman has good um, ways how to twist that around. And throw that right back at them, but not a lot of people is good with their tongue, like John Fetterman, unfortunately. <laughs> so <laughs> I just did a uh, Pennsylvania one two weeks ago about the PA election, and yeah, talked about that. 
Yeah. Well, awesome, I, man. Yeah. Oh, just a quick comment on that election. Uh-huh. I still think Fetterman has a shot to win. I personally think so. Um, yeah, Dr. Certainly. Oz, I don't know what the fuck he's doing. I saw his campaigns. <laughs> And no, this is someone who has voted. I have voted, you know, I've voted for both parties, you know, of course, obviously for different positions. It's illegal to vote for Democrat, Republican in the same position. It's, hey, 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 you only one vote at a time. Yeah. Don't, don't do double votes, people. You'll get stop caught the eventually. Steal. Yeah, stop the steal. <laughs> and so, oh, oh, yeah, I'm going to talk about that. That stop the steal thing. Um, hold on, hold on. We got to wrap. We got to wrap. Oh. We got parting shots, parting shots. Our partner shots. Yeah, for uh, you were talking about Fetterman. Oh, Fetterman. Oh, okay, want, sure. And anything you want to close on? Okay, no, right. So with um, Fetterman, I think Fetterman has a good shot to um, win the the Senate seat here in Pennsylvania, and that's the one that Pat Toomey, a uh, Republican who was very critical, anti-Trump Republican, um, it's leave because he's retiring. I think he has a shot to win because he knows Pennsylvania. He's a real Pennsylvanian. Okay, that does count for for voters. You know, you got to relate to, you got to be relatable. And Dr. Oz is very unrelatable. He complained about how his guac and his fancy ingredients cost more. That's not very relatable at all. You, at best, you relate to probably 0.5% of the population over there. I mean, that's not a winning strategy. The same way it's just peasy to the rich. And and just only the woke crowd, you know, if you piece it to margin, you know, to margin marginalized groups only, sadly it's not a winning strategy. You gotta be broad um in your appeal. And Fetterman, he has a good mouth, um, he uses it well, and Dr. Oz is just foolish. But the polls, sadly, is just shocking. He's catching up, Dr. Oz. Yeah, he's making a run for it right now. I said, like, how the hell is this happening? He has the most brain dead commercials out there. And this is something that this is something that Republicans used to run twenty years ago. That's why some of them lost. Um I mean they, they dealt with epic fail because of their out of touch um as and what the hell is this? I said, like, Oh man, that seat's gonna flip blue and I won't be surprised. I won't be surprised. I still think Fetterman got a shot. Uh, that that's my that's my um take on that period. As long as Dr. Oz continue to be stupid, let him run his mouth, let him run ads because it's gonna hurt him. The more he talks, the more he deals with yeah. Just just let him. Just like let it's like told some Democrats, let Trump be Trump. He's gonna eventually screw up. He's gonna cause enough. He's gonna cause some countries. He's, he's you know you can use that against him. So that's my take on the on the whole PA Senate race. Awesome, Elias. Well, for anybody interested, go check out Politically High Tech. Your pod- it's a weekly podcast, correct? Sadly, it used to be weekly, but it's every two weeks now. Yeah, I feel you. It's a lot of work. Yeah, especially doing it solo. Yep. Yeah. It- yep. For sure. Well, awesome, man. Well, thank you so much uh, for your time. Great to, you know, chop it up with you. And, yeah, thanks so much, uh from me and the audience. We really appreciate it. All right. Thank you.